get rid of them. Hi guys, it's actually turning into a pleasant late winter day here in the great state of Texas here in the collapse of global industrial civilization. We have made it to the Ides of March 2023. That would be Wednesday, March 15th, 2023. And uh, I have to uh, get out of here in 30 minutes. So what I am going to do is put about a 30 year rant into 30 minutes. And uh, I wanna thank Alert uh, listener Scott Covert, I believe it was Scott, who uh, reminded me, I guess, that it was past time for Sam Mitchell of Collapse Chronicles to join the World Economic Forum. <laughs> yes, it has happened. I have, uh, at, I guess at midnight last night, your old Doomer, your old chronicler of the collapse of global industrial civilization, which, uh, how can you chronicle the collapse of global industrial civilization without talking about Klaus Schwab and the Davos boys. Uh, so I am now an official, I guess, card-carrying member of the World Economic Forum. I highly suggest that you uh, go on the World Economic Forum uh, website and become a card-carrying member of the World Economic Forum. So guys, I, I'm going to fully admit, I, I have been hearing about the World Economic Forum, particularly this, uh, apparently this spawn of Satan Antichrist, uh, apparently by the name of Klaus Schwab. And just, you know, there is no, I mean, even the United Nations cannot hold a candle to the unadulterated horseshit from every single level surrounding the World Economic Forum and Klaus Schwab. I, I mean, the bullshit is so thick. It is so deep. I don't give a damn which side you're, you're coming in on. Uh, so I am going, I guess, I uh, will call this a Doomer joins the World Economic Forum. Uh, so this is the Doomer perspective, one that I have not heard. Everybody has an opinion about the World Economic Forum and Klaus Schwab, but my guess is that 99.9% of the people with an opinion about the World Economic Forum and Klaus Schwab have spent exactly as much time as I have actually researching the subject, which is virtually zero. Uh, it, it, uh, it, it is so fraught with landmines of bullshit, there is no way, there is no way that you're going to find an objective analysis of the uh, World Economic Forum uh, and, and, and Klaus Schwab. So, uh, but first, uh, just, I, I, I'm, I'm going to spend five minutes uh, on the uh, on this uh, you know this right wing Alex Jones conspiracy wacko crap uh, about that the World Economic Forum and Klaus Schwab I guess are you know obviously some of the architects of the New World Order uh, depopulation agenda. All right, so we're going to go on to, I guess this is disinfo.com. Okay, so what is the unadulterated horseshit that disinfo.com is 
going. This is all we need to say about it. Okay. In a nutshell, the claim by these right-wing, clueless moron, Alex Jones, uh, ALTs, AL toadies, uh, is this. The World Economic Forum aims to reduce the human population to one billion chosen people because there are not enough places and sources, I think they meant to say resources, in the world for the whole population. For this, the World Economic Forum created a reset plan. The plan is in the implementation stage through wars and pandemics using the poison named the COVID-19 vaccine. This is what disinfo.com has to say about it. Okay. Recurring conspiracy theories about the so-called reset plan. The claim is presented without any evidence any evidence whatsoever on any level that the World Economic Forum, the United Nations, the, in the International Monetary Fund, all the rest uh, uh, of the gobbledygook. Okay, I am not here to insult my intelligence or yours that Klaus Schwab or the World Economic Forum has any intention on any level of reducing the population of this planet to one billion people. I wish to hell that it did. Okay, but enough of that insulting intelligence. But then we have the equally insults to my intelligence that anybody who believes for one minute that the World Economic Forum or Klaus Schwab <laughs> is, go is going to do one damn thing to uh, save this planet uh, on, on, on any level is every bit as clueless as any conspiracy wacko thinking the World Economic Forum or Klaus Schwab uh, has an agenda to uh, reduce the world's population. So, uh, so I've been spending uh, I've been spending uh, a couple of hours over here on the World Economic Forum, you know, on their website, uh, which, you know, on one level, as Scott mentioned, you know, saying, uh, Sam, this sounds a lot like Manga Bay. Uh, if you just went on, and, and uh, it's actually just based on, on the a lot of the articles in here are very good articles. They are they, they are they pretty much are verbatim uh, for Manga Bay. You know, it sounds like something that that I might write on Medium.com. You read this talking about all the ways that the world is doomed. And uh, the World Economic Forum, uh, it does a hell of a lot better job of explaining uh, why the world is doomed uh, than, you know, just the, the mainstream media in general. Uh, the, the World Economic Forum, at least uh, from this level, is an absolute breath of fresh air. Uh, of course, what is left out of the equation, it is the World Economic Forum, the, the very, the very idea of it. 
Okay, it, it, it is the it is people like Klaus Schwab and, and the organizations like the World Economic Forum that have that more than anybody else on this planet have taken this planet uh, to the brink to to the eve of destruction. It, it, it is Klaus Schwab and his ilk. Uh, these people in the World Economic Forum, uh, they are the poster children uh, of the collapse of this planet. And uh, I, I mean, this is so absurd. What is that term, the Hegelian dialect? Uh, what, what, what is that? I'm trying, I'm trying to remember. Uh, uh, that, that um, Chris Hedges, you know, when I, I often say when Chris Hedges and Alex Jones start uh, sounding alike, you better pay attention, you know, about where uh, the, the very people who have created the problem, you, you know, are, are the ones that we're supposed to trust to come up with the solutions to the problems that they created. This, this is exactly what these guys are. Uh, the, you know, if, uh, let, let's try to, uh, okay, we're going to pretend like, okay, if, uh, <laughs> if, if Sancho Panza was Klaus Schwab, uh, okay, if Sancho Panza was Klaus Schwab, as a younger man, thinking of a you, you, you know one of these global organizations, it would be for Klaus Schwab uh, to you, you know to claim that that he and the, his planet-eating bunch of cronies want to save this planet would be uh, tantamount to uh, Sancho Panza creating the World Chipmunk Protection Forum. Okay, uh, let, let, let's, let's, make, let, let, let's make no mistake about this. Uh, I, you know, I, I mean, I'm even a, a, a little bit insulting my intelligence by, by, having, uh, by having this much of the conversation and yours. I cannot believe that anybody uh, listening to Collapse Chronicles uh, believes on any level that the World Economic Forum, the Davos Boys, uh, have this planet's best interest at heart uh, any more than they believe uh, that Klaus Schwab uh, wants to reduce uh, the globe's population to... Uh, one billion. So uh, I'm just gonna sit here. What do I have? I have 21 minutes uh, <laughs> to, to uh, insult my intelligence and yours. So what is the World Economic Forums? This is the one article I can find uh, on the idea of overpopulation, you know, so this was their coverage of the planets, you know, uh, reaching 8 billion people. All right. You know, the, okay. Uh, this is the three bullet overview. This is, you can, now I could have a little robot read this to us. Okay. Here are the three takeaways. Uh, number one, global population will reach 8 billion in 2022 and pretty much 11 billion people by 2100. Number two, despite societal advances in health, technology, and education, prosperity has still not developed equitably with local and global challenges to stability, inhibiting human 
opportunity globally, but we're going to hear from six young global, global leaders who believe that equal opportunity in a world of 8 billion people can be achieved through fair labor standards, investing in women and girls, diversity in research, adhering to the guiding principles of the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals, understanding the interrelation between crises and a serious call to action to the world. Okay. Global population growth is a testament to human progress with an eightfold increase in the number of humans alive since 1800. And in 2015, global GDP was 90, 90 times higher than in 1820, driven by improvements in global health, prosperity, and stability, humans today live longer, safer, and healthier lives than at any point in history. <coughs> there is much to be proud of in a global population of 8 billion people, hmm, including lower infant and mother mortality rates, which means more people reach adulthood, medical advances, and economic growth have also resulted in longer lifespans and improved quality of life, read, being able to buy more stuff. Whenever you read this improved quality of life, it means celebrating people living longer, uh, having more children, and being able to buy more stuff. This is because the World Economic Forum and the rest of the New World Order is 100% dependent on an ever-growing population and consumption of this planet-eating crap. Meanwhile, technology continues to broaden the horizons of human development and achievement. Hmm. Where is the big butt? However, this progress has not been evenly distributed in inequality, discrimination, violence, and existential threats continue to blight the lives of millions. The poorest 50% of the world share only 8.5% of total global income. Do you think so? And why do you think that is? Who is, if you had to pick the group uh, that is the most responsible for global inequality, then, then any group on this planet, it is the Davos boys, the Davos boys, the, you know, Klaus Schwab, and the, uh, you know, the, the real movers and shakers, the, the shakers of the bugs in a jar. Klaus Schwab is, is personally probably as much responsible for the global inequality on this planet as any single individual on the planet. Okay, he is an industrialist. His entire life 
has been dedicated to planet eating. It is the destruction of this planet that has fueled Klaus Schwab's and all his buddies. My guess is if you took the board of directors of the World Economic Forum, I don't know, let's say there's 10 of them. You take the 10 highest, this is just a guess, just a guess, you, you take the 10 biggest mucking mucks, you, you know, Klaus at the top and his nine uh, underlings, they probably hold more wealth uh, than my guess is at least 2 billion people on this planet. So uh, if anybody uh, can talk about global inequality, it is Klaus Schwab and the uh, and uh, his bunch of planet eaters. Uh, good God, guys, I, I can, uh, where am I? Well, I have 13 minutes, uh, to, uh, talk about the, you know, uh, it, it, they, if you want to read all their articles, they have all of these topics. So, I went on here and joined at midnight last night and went through their list of topics. Obviously, population and overpopulation nowhere to be seen. And last night, they had biodiversity as one of the topics. Biodiversity was one of the topics. So I was going to go on and read some of the biodiversity topics, just the titles of the articles. So I go on today, no mention of biodiversity. The entire topic of biodiversity in the last 12 hours. So let, let's just, let's just uh, hit one climate change. Okay. Well, where are we? Uh, I'm hitting climate change and nothing is happening. But, uh, but anyway, I think Scott sent me uh, their climate change roundup. Okay, just to give you an example uh, from their climate change page. Europe experiences one of its warmest ever winters and the other climate crisis climate crisis stories you need to read this week. So we have the Europe thing, plastic in the oceans could almost triple by 2040, says report. Um, then just a roundup more on the climate crisis. Anyway, guys, you can go through this and read all these. Just if you want to read about biodiversity, Good luck. All right. But what is the World Economic Forum's mission? Okay. The World Economic Forum is the international organization for public-private cooperation. The forum manages, I'm sorry, the forum engages the foremost political business, cultural, and other leaders of society to shape global, regional, and industry agendas. It was established in 1971 as a not-for-profit foundation, now headquartered in Geneva, Switzerland. It is independent, impartial, hmm and not tied to any special interest. You will find no ties to any special interest in the World Economic Forum. The forum strives in all its efforts to demonstrate entrepreneurship and the global public interest. Hmm, 
while upholding the highest standards of governance, moral and intellectual integrity hmm, is at the heart of everything the World Economic Forum does. Uh, okay. Our activities are shaped by a unique institutional culture founded on the stakeholder theory, which asserts that an organization, meaning all of these planet-eating corporations, is accountable to all parts of society. Yes, the institution carefully blends and balances the best of many kinds of organizations from both the public and private sector, international organizations and academic institutions. We believe that progress happens by bringing together people from all walks of life who have the drive and influence to make positive change. Yes. So what is their impact? Their impact. For more than 50 years, the forum has engaged global partners, otherwise known as planet-eating multinational global corporations. That's what partners means. To drive significant impact, creating historic initiatives, industry breakthroughs, economic solutions, and tens of thousands of projects and collaborations improving the state of the world. Yes, it is the global industrial corporatocracy improving the state of the world. This is their impact, and as I say, uh, my guess is if you took the global uh, industrial multi-billion dollar multinational uh, answering to no one planet-eating corporations with the uh, world government in their pockets uh, as much as any organization on the planet, they have done more to impact this planet. Okay? <laughs> this planet, uh, if Klaus Schwab and his ilk did, were not on here making it possible, if anybody uh, has made it possible for the planet's population to more than double during the lifetime of, of, of any organization, it would be the World Economic Forum. You can probably thank the World Economic Forum, probably, I don't know, two or three billion people uh, would not be living on this planet if it were not for the global, uh, for the uh, the World Economic Forum. Okay. Uh, so what is their position on leadership and governance? The forum strives to model world-class corporate governance where values are as important as rules Legitimacy, hmm, legitimacy, there you go. Accountability, don't forget transparency, and concerted action are the guiding principles of the forum. I cannot believe the word sustainability did not make it in there with legitimacy, accountability, and transparency. Where the hell is sustainability? Um, okay, the forum is chaired by 
founder and executive chairman, Professor Klaus Schwab, guided by a board of trustees defined as exceptional individuals who act as guardians of its missions and values and oversees the forum's work in promoting true global citizenship. Yes, the board of trustees comprises outstanding leaders from business, politics, academia, and civil society. Yes. Oh, God. So where is sustainability, you know? We, uh... Okay, who are their partners? This is their partners. World Economic Forum partners are leading global companies, otherwise known as multi-billion dollar multinational corporations, developing solutions to the world's greatest challenges. There you go. The people who created the problem are going to develop solutions to the problems they, more than anybody else in the history of the planet, created. Thank you, Chris Hedges and Alex Jones, for uh, uh, educating us about the Hegelian dialectic, or whatever it's called. Our partners are the driving force behind the forum's programs. Exactly. That is exactly who is driving uh, the World Economic Forum. It's all of these, these planet-eating, uh, just evil mongers uh, who own this planet. They, they are the ones who are going to save the planet. It is Sancho Panza who is going to save the chipmunks. The single biggest threat to this planet is coming up with solutions to save the planet as they absolutely cheer on an ever-growing population and consumption. Okay, but we're going to close with the World Economic Forum's sustainability policy. Okay. The World Economic Forum fully recognizes the importance of sustainability. The single most unsustainable group of people on an unsustainable planet of 8 billion unsustainable humans. Okay, that World Economic Forum recognizes the importance of sustainability in developing and strengthening our mission. Our approach aims to take a leadership role by advancing global understanding of sustainability. A global understanding of sustainability. Guys, is there, is there anybody not understanding we are living in the twilight zone? Uh, I mean, I can hear Rod Serling banging on the roof of his coffin to let him out. All right. Okay. Advancing global understanding of sustainability, developing strategic partnerships with these unsustainable planet-eating corporations, and, and implementing best practices, best practices to reduce the impact of our operations on the environment and people. <laughs> oh my God. The World Economic Forum is an independent international 
institution committed to improving the state of the world by engaging businesses, politics, academia, and other leaders of society to shape global, regional, and industry agendas. To achieve this goal, you, we have identified the following priority sustainability objectives that we believe through the forum's own activities will demonstrate our commitment to addressing some of the world's most pressing global challenges. And since I have no idea how to get the page to scroll down, I have no clue. Uh, we're going to wrap up with the top five sustainability bullets. This is how the World Economic Forum practices sustainability. Number one, promote sustainable business models and practices. There is no such thing as a sustainable business model. That is an oxymoron. It is absurd on the face of it. Number two, limit our environmental impact. Uh, okay, the, the World Economic Forum and its partners could limit their uh, environmental impact on this planet by about 80% and they would still destroy the planet. Number three, uphold the highest standards of governance. Mm -hmm. Number four, keep our staff members healthy and safe. Maybe bulletproof vest for all of their staff members. Number five, be a responsible and and inclusive employer and client. <laughs> and it goes on for there, but I am uh, too much of a Luddite to figure out how to make the page scroll down to dig deeper and deeper and deeper into one of the biggest pits of unadulterated horseshit I have ever encountered in, in, in my Doomer life. Uh, the, the, the World Economic Forum is a direct threat to life on planet Earth. A direct threat to life on planet Earth and it has nothing whatsoever to do with some sort of depopulation agenda through the Great Reset. Now the population of the planet will be reduced to one billion or less, hopefully to zero, uh, by the actions of the partners of the World Economic Forum, the, the global industrial uh, civilization, society, economy will uh, take the population of humans to at least a billion, if not zero, uh, just by uh, doing what it does. So to that degree, there is a uh, depopulation uh, uh, agenda unfolding. Uh, you can't argue that, uh, but it is not, uh, the, you know what I'm saying. 
Uh, it's not like, you know, I mean, what do these conspiracy wackos think? Do they think that Klaus Schwab and his little uh, band of evil henchmen get up every morning and sit around a table and, and decide how they're going to, uh, you know, pull these? Anyway, uh, I am so proud to be a, 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 the newest member to the World Economic Forum. I would absolutely love it. It says members of the press, if you, if you want to contact, if you are uh, a journalist wanting to have a conversation with some PR flack at the World Economic Forum, uh, I might just have to arrange an interview with uh, with some PR flack from the World Economic Forum while I'm waiting for Klaus Schwab to answer my email. But I gotta run uh, and pick up somebody at a dog pound. Bye guys. Ugh, God. Listen to the birds sing.